So having reviewed the um, normal skin function and a little bit about lesions, now we're going to talk about um, individual disorders. And like we will do in um, pretty much every uh, individual organ system chapter, we're going to divide them into inflammatory, inflammatory disorders, immune system disorders, um, that sort of thing. So like I said, all of the things that we've talked about up until now, now we're going to talk about them in relationship to an individual organ system. So um, uh, puritis we talked about in the last section. Um, puritis is the medical term for itching. It's associated with allergic responses, chemical irritation caused by insect bites, um, infection by parasites like scabies, and the word scabies, doesn't that just make you feel itchy? Um, the mechanism of puritis is not totally understood. It might have to do with the release of histamine. Um, it might have to do with uh, nerve um, activation. Um, but if you break the skin barrier caused by scratching, breaking the skin barrier caused by scratching can result in infection. You can introduce those opportunistic pathogens from our normal flora into the area where you broke the skin barrier. So um, when they're testing skin lesions, um, they might do culture and staining of specimens um, to see if it's a bacterial infection. They might use microscopic and direct observation um, or specific procedures for fungal or parasitic infections. Um, because fungi and parasites do not grow in culture the same way that bacteria do, um, they have to use specific procedures. So a biopsy is used where you, a biopsy is where you take an individual tissue sample from a, a small area um, to detect malignant changes. So remember what we talked about back in chapter one, malignant changes, you might get that dysplasia, you might get um, changes in the cells where they're not normal. Um, so they use biopsy um, to either prior to removing skin lesions or following the removal of skin lesions, just to see if there are malignant changes, are those going to uh, metastasize to another area? That's why malignant melanoma gets you because it metastasizes very quickly to other areas of the body. And we will talk more about that. Um, blood tests can also be helpful in the diagnosis of conditions caused by allergies or abnormal immune reaction. Because remember in the um, immune chapter, we talked about the production of those um, immunoglobulins, and those can be detected in a blood test. Um, skin testing um, of allergies using a patch or scratch method. They do little scratches and they introduce allergens in them and they see where you reacted. So a lot of times that is the determination for skin allergies. So general treatment measures for um, symptoms of um, skin disorders. Um, for treating puritis, they use topical agents to reduce sensation. Um, internally, they might treat them with antihistamines or glucocorticoids if it's really serious. Um, avoiding the allergen, that's a good treatment um, to reduce risk of recurrence. And um, if an infection follows, either because of break, breaking the skin because of scratching or for what other reason, um, it may require antibiotic treatment. Um, Precancerous lesions are often surgically removed either by um, a scalpel or by laser therapy, electrodesiccation where they actually use an electrode to um, kill the cells, or cryosurgery where they freeze it off with li liquid nitrogen. So we're going to start into inflammatory disorders of the skin. And so when we talk about other body systems, we're also going to talk about inflammatory disorders of those systems. So contact dermatitis, and this is, if you've ever had a reaction to a band-aid or bandage, um, it's contact dermatitis. Um, or uh, latex um, is often causes contact dermatitis. So it's, it's caused by exposure to an allergen or direct chemical or mechanical irritation of the skin. Um, allergic dermatitis um, results from exposure to any number of substances, including metals, cosmetics, soaps, chemicals, and plants. So if you're allergic to it, it can cause contact dermatitis. I will give uh, my mom as an example. She has very sensitive skin and she's allergic to a lot of things. She has skin allergies to a lot of things. She was on vacation and she ran out of her 
regular shampoo and she used the shampoo that was in the hotel and had contact dermatitis as a, as a result. So um, direct chem chemical or mechanical irritation. It doesn't involve an immune response, unlike some other skin disorders. Um, it's inflammatory because of its direct exposure. So what you do to treat it is you remove the irritant. Um, sometimes they will use topical glu glucocorticoids to reduce inflammation in that area. So usually with contact dermatitis, sensitization occurs on the first exposure. So subsequent exposures result in manifestations, that is the itchy or puritic rash. Um, location of the lesion is a clue to the identity of the allergen, like poison ivy or the picture with the band-aid mark, you're like, oh, I'm pretty sure where that irritant came from, came from the adhesive on the band-aid. So a lot of times um, before I use any sort of tape on a person in the clinic, um, I do an allergy test. Um, or I ask them if they've ever had an allergic reaction to anything, <laughs> to a band-aid or to tape or anything like that. Um, some people say, oh no, I'm fine and whatever. But if there's any doubt, I do an allergy test where I put a little piece of tape on the person and then have them leave it on until the next time they come in and we see if they react to it. So um, signs and symptoms of allergic dermatitis are puritic area, it's itchy, arithmetous area, which is red, um, edematous area, which is swollen, and the area is often covered with small vesicles, little red bumps, little red fluid filled bumps. So. Um, the um, edematous area or arithmetous area may be puritic or painful, and the treatment is remove the irritant and topical glucocorticoids. So urticaria, which is also known as hives, it's a result of a type 1 hypersensitivity reaction commonly caused by ingested substances such as shellfish or certain fruits or drugs. So you're allergic to strawberries, you eat strawberries, you break out in hives. Um, one time, the um, I'm, I'm somewhat cursed on the Jingle Bell Run, even though I've raised a lot of money for the Arthritis Foundation on the Jingle Bell Run. Usually, I raise a bunch of money, and then I twist my ankle during the Jingle Bell Run or have some other horrible thing. Um, one year, I was on the hospital team, and they gave us all scarves, and I didn't wash the scarf ahead of time, and I totally broke out in uh, contact dermatitis and hives, <laughs> for type 1 hypersensitivity to whatever was on that scarf. And um, I washed it, but I could never wear it again because it drove me crazy. So anyway, um, the, the with hives, the thing that um, distinguishes hives is it's an eruption of hard raised uh, arithmetous lesions, so red lesions, um, not in the area of contact. So I actually broke out in hives from that um, Jingle Bell Run scarf um, everywhere, not just where it was touching me. So that's the distinction between um, hives and contact dermatitis. Um, the lesions are highly purific, puritic. They are very itchy. Um, they're found on the skin. They might be scattered all over the body and they're occasion occasionally in the pharyngeal mucosa, which that could potentially cause an airway obstruction. So, um, this, this could be serious. This could, this could develop into anaphylaxis. So a lot of times hives are part of anaphylaxis. So you want to check when someone has hives, you want to check for swelling around their mouth and check their airway. And you want to administer an EpiPen or other first aid as required. Over-the-counter antihistamines are frequently used to treat um, hives. Cor uh, corticosteroids, when you have inflammation of the airways, a lot of times inhaled corticosteroids. Um, and the um, anything that ends with MAB on the pharmaceuticals, um, amalizumab, wow, I, I don't know if that's the correct pronunciation of that, but um, if people have chronic hives, a lot of times this is an immune suppressant, um, and it, it, anything that ends with MAB, and you'll see a lot of the um, pharmaceuticals end with MAB, it's an immune suppressant. So that's when it's chronic. So... Um, with my uh, Jingle Ball Run scarf story, I used over-the-counter antihistamines. Um, I went home, I took some, and then I slept for three hours, and I felt a lot better afterwards. <laughs> so, uh, and it didn't develop into um, anaphylaxis for me. Yay! Um, atopic dermatitis is um, also known as eczema. 
Atopic means it's an inherited tendency. It's a common problem in infants. It's that red um, rash with a serous exudate. So serous exudate is the clear exudate. Commonly occurs on face, chest, and shoulders. In adults, the rash, instead of being um, the, the exudate, it's dry, scaly, and puritic, often on the flexor surfaces of your arms. So you all know what that is on the flexor surfaces. Um, so it, eczema is a chronic inflammation that results from response to allergens. So um, you see when they do a differential white blood cell count, you, say, you see increased eosinophils and increased serum IgE levels. So um, affected areas become more sensitive to irritants. So soaps, certain fabrics, and temperature changes can irritate that. Um, th the potential complication of eczema is secondary infections due to scratching, particularly in little kids, because it's hard to tell a little kid, don't scratch, don't scratch, when they're itching. So um, the treatment for eczema is to eliminate the aggravating agent, whether it's the laundry detergent you're using, the soap you're using, or something else topical glucocorticoids, and antihistamines. There are some topical um, prescription medications that have been developed lately. They're supposed to treat eczema really well. So that's one thing is new pharmaceuticals are always coming out, and so there might be new things to treat. It's always worth seeing your dermatologist just in case. So psoriasis is a chronic inflammatory skin disorder, and it affects 1 to 3% of the population. Um, it's believed to be genetic in origin. There is a type of um, arthritis that's called psoriatic arthritis um, that is um, related. Um, so usually they ha people have onset of psoriasis in the teenage years, and it's marked by remission and exacerbation. So it gets worse, it gets better. It gets worse, it gets better. Um, cases vary in severity. And what happens, what causes it, uh, or the pathophysiology of it, is that you get abnormal T cell activation and excessive proliferation of keratinocytes. So the cellular proliferation, uh, boy, Loretta, learn to talk. Proliferation is greatly increased, leading to thickening of the dermis and epidermis. So you get these... Um, psoriatic plaques that they that's in picture B there. Um, so rather than shedding every two weeks like our regular skin does, you get um, shedding in one day. So there's a lot of skin shedding with psoriasis because we are um, getting excess keratin so there's way more to shed. So you get the red patches of skin covered with silvery scales. Um, a lot of times in children, you'll see these small scaling spots. Um, dry cracked skin that may bleed, and you understand, of course, that that may be a risk for infection. Um, itching, burning, or soreness. Um, thick and pitted or ridged nails can be a symptom of um, psoriasis. And swollen and stiff joints, and that's where we're going over into the psoriatic arthritis. Treated with glucocorticoids, tar preparations, um, anti-metabolic... Uh, uh, methotrexate in severe cases and exposure to sunlight is often part of the treatment. There are some um, autoimmune um, or immunosuppressant treatments that are now being used for psoriasis and you see commercials on TV for them all the time because one to three percent of the population needs those. So um, pemphigus or pemphigus if you want to pronounce it correctly, pemphigus, um, is an autoimmune disorder. Um, so autoantibodies disrupt the cohesion between epidermal cells and causes blisters to form, and those blisters are called bullae. Um, the skin sheds and it leaves a painful area that is open to secondary infection. It can be life-threatening if it's extensive. There is a um, form of it that's called Stevens-Johnson syndrome that is life-threatening. Um, the signs and symptoms of it include blisters in the mouth, blisters spreading to the skin. Um, a lot of times they're painful, but they're not itchy. Um, breathing can be difficult due to swollen mouth and throat. So that's serious. Anytime you have um, swollen mouth and throat, um, think, think 911. Think 
um, airway. <laughs> Think, you know, this person can't breathe. Um, they're treated with systemic glucocorticoids and immunosuppressants because it's an autoimmune disorder. Scleroderma, it may occur as a skin disorder, and it may, but it may be systemic and affect the viscera as well. The primary cause is not known, although it is thought that there is a genetic component to it. Um, what happens is you get increased collagen deposition, um, inflammation and fibrosis with decreased capillary networks. So you get hard, shiny, and tight, immovable areas of skin. So sclera is um, like sclerosis is hardening. Um, so they talk about the, um, sclerotic plaques. So multiple sclerosis means you have multiple sclerotic plaques in the nervous system. So this is scleroderma, it's plaques in the skin. Um, so when it affects your organs, um, it can cause renal failure, failure, intestinal obstruction, respiratory failure caused by the distortion of tissues. So there's a picture in, uh, yeah, it's right here in this. So this is from the book where it shows someone with scleroderma and how their skin is being pulled in. So the signs and symptoms are that hard, shiny, tight, immovable areas of the skin. The fingertips are narrowed and shortened and Raynaud's phenomena might be present where you um, get uh, cold sensitivity in a finger or two. You lose facial expressions because the skin tight tightens and movement of the mouth and eyes can be impaired. Um, the cutaneous form of scleroderma can also affect the microcirculation of various organs, eventually causing renal fail failure, intestinal obstruction, and respiratory failure due to pulmonary hypertension. So um, it can be super serious. Um, there are several different medications that they use to treat it, and it's based on the specific manifestations of the disease. So here's our, um, you can see the drawing in of the skin on this.